Regina Greenlee, the roving reporter for On Point Tutorials, Tips, and Tours. Today we are at the Grand Rapids Public Museum where we are celebrating Quilt Day at the museum. We have a lot of people to talk to and a lot of great things to see, so let's take a look. You know, in addition to doing On Point TV, Nancy wears a lot of other quilt-related hats. Nancy, tell me what other things you're involved in. I am the current president of the West Michigan Quilters Guild. It is an organization that has been around for almost 40 years now. Um, and our goal is to educate the public and artists about the art of quilting. Another part of our goal is to preserve the not only the interest and the artistry of quilts, but the actual quilting items themselves. And so we have partnered, a very close partnership, with the Grand Rapids Public Museum. So along with being the president of the West Michigan Quilters Guild, I'm also the chairperson for the Grand Rapids Public Museum West Michigan Quilters Guild combination. So we work very closely with them. One of the things we do is the event here that you're seeing today, which is Quilts at the Museum, where we're just trying to bring quilts to the public. And some of the people here are obviously members of the West Michigan Quilters Guild. How many members does the guild have? The guild at this point, I think it was 433 members and we go up a little bit and down a little bit. We're very active in the Grand Rapids community. One big part of what we do at the Grand at the West Michigan Quilters Guild is our charities. Our charities are, our main charity is the Spectrum Neonatal Center Ties That Bind. So if you ever have, know somebody that has a neonatal baby that's in the NICU at the Spectrum Neonatal, they actually will be able to go to the quilt closet and get a quilt to put over their baby's incubator and then they get to take that quilt home with them. We also raise approximately $14,000 a year that we donate to the Ties That Bind, which is an organization used by the um, social workers at the NICU unit to help families in need while they're having to travel back and forth and take care of their baby that's in the NICU. Um, we also work with hospice. We work with Santa Claus girls. Um, there's a lot of different organizations that we work with and one of them is the Grand Rapids Public Museum. And I know we've done different events over the years with them and this is an annual event. Have you been, have you been doing this for a long time? Um, we have and it generally used to always be on National Quilting Day but National Quilting Day has changed a little bit because the organization that started it and it landed on a strange day. So today we're calling it Quilts at the Museum. Oh, and this is marvelous because not only can we see the exhibit, but we're seeing both uh, for young and old, they have a quilt design exhibit that we'll be looking at a little bit later. But, well, Nancy, thank you very much. I appreciate this. You're welcome. Have a great day. Boy, you ladies are cranky today. What's up? It's fun. <laughs> And these are antique hand-cranked sewing machines. I'm here with Esther Taylor and Shark Koenig. Esther, can you tell me a little bit more about your machine? Well, my machine was actually originally an electric, made in the 1970s, and I took the motor off and put a hand crank on. Oh, that's amazing. Did you do the work yourself? I did. It's actually very, very easy, and there's videos on YouTube telling anybody who wants to do it how to do it. And why do you like hand-cranking? The nice thing is that if you're hand cranking with friends, you can carry on a conversation while you're sewing because they make very little noise. Oh, that's great. And, and with the hand crank machine, can you do most of the things you can do with a regular machine? With mine, it can, I can because it has zigzag stitch and it has cams to do some decorative stitches. Um, the older machines mostly are only straight stitch machines. Oh, this is amazing. It looks like a lot of fun. that our little quilt guild in, in Holland is working on is these little wool table rugs. And you buy these little uh, patterns and they've got all the instructions inside. And you trace the design on fusible web, cut it out, fuse it down there, and then you take your threads and stitch around the design. And wool quilting, that was popular back in the day as well, was like the wool penny rugs. 
And this is just a little modern version of the, the penny routes. Okay, and, and so that points out another wonderful thing about quilting, is there are a lot of different styles that people oh, can be involved absolutely. in. Absolutely, and what's attractive about these is you can just take them with you. They're small projects, and, you can, and people that like to do handwork, waiting in the doctor's office. Or, waiting or at the museum. The museum, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right, Mary, well, thank you very much for showing us these, and we'll catch up with you in a little bit upstairs. Thank you. with Mary Ellen Gedras. And Mary Ellen, you have real bright fabric and real muted fabric. Are those going together? Um, no, they're two separate projects. In the front, I have some nine patch squares. Um, these I put together on my hand crank machine. Um, I'm thinking of making a quilt, um, possibly a quilt for um, donating to the show. Yeah. Well, as one of the co-chairs of the show, I highly recommend that you do that. <laughs> And then what about the bright fabric? The bright fabric I'm putting together, and these are going to be cut up and made into pot holders. Oh, that's marvelous. So really, with your hand crank machine, you can do just about anything. Yeah, just about anything. Smaller projects mostly, not nothing too complicated, but it forces you to slow down and just kind of meditate on what you're doing. And, and enjoy it. Yes, and you can still talk at the same time. <laughs> well, thank you very much, Mary Ellen. person I'm talking to is Donna. And Donna, you've got some baby quilts here. What are you working on? I'm working on a Neil Natal quilt. Okay, and I know that the West Michigan Quilters Guild makes quite a few quilts for the Spectrum Hospital neonatal unit. Do you have any idea how many? Uh, last year we donated over 1,300. 1,300 baby quilts. So, I mean, that is amazing. I have been to the quilt closet at Spectrum Hospital, and they have quilts stacked high. And um, how do the parents, do they assign quilts, or do they get to pick? Uh, they get to pick. Uh, I think, that, I think the, um, the, the nurses there, you know, pick out a couple, and then the parents get the final choice. How amazing. And I've heard some stories about how um, sometimes the moms will maybe have a quilt for their baby, but then take that quilt at home at night so that they can be with their baby at night while the baby's still in the hospital. So you're really doing wonderful work. And, and is this a small committee or who, who makes them all? Uh, the members do. That's great. And there are several groups that get together. I know I'll be sewing some neonatal quilts tomorrow with a group of friends. Well, thank you very much, Donna. Thank you. The next person I'm chatting with is Pat Harkins, and Pat's quilt actually has quite a story behind it. Pat, tell me what you're working on. Um, well, I'm working on some blocks that were orphan blocks that got donated to um, the worker bee at the Queen Bee Quilt Shop, and we decided that the best use of them would be to put them into a quilt and then raffle it off at our guild show. Oh, that, that's amazing. Now, these quilts are special. Everything is hand embroidered. And I understand that these just sort of got found. So you really don't know who did all the stitching. No, and they're from the early 1990s. So we, we really don't know where they came from, who did them. They, a lot of them have states on them. Some of them don't. Um, but we know when the time period is because a couple of them had actually dates on the. That's amazing. And so, uh, sadly, somebody did all this work and, and then lost the, the work that they were working on. But the work itself lives on because somebody will have an opportunity to win this quilt and have the, I mean, this is really nice handwork. It is beautiful handwork, um, and we're, we think maybe it might have been a group that were the different members from the group sent in the blocks. Oh, that's great. Well, it is beautiful, and I look forward to being able to buy raffle tickets for it at, at the Guild Show. We do that. We do that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Pat. Oh boy, man, this is fun. So this is this is a paper quilt, isn't yes. it? Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm here with Claudine and Michelle. And what are you guys doing here today? We're trying to introduce kids to their first quilt square. We're taking a piece of paper with a pattern on it and giving them pieces of fabric. And they're gluing their fabric to the paper. 
to get an idea of what a quilt looks like. So they're making their first quilts. That's amazing. And so kids get an opportunity to learn about light fabric and dark fabric. We met Mary Voss a little earlier downstairs. And now we are upstairs in the museum near the museum's quilt exhibit. Mary, tell me a little bit about it. This is organized by West Michigan Quilters Guild. And the quilt behind me was a quilt that was made by the members in honor of their 30th anniversary in 2007. And I can see that there are signatures on, on the quilt. Are you on there? I am, but I think I'm behind the sign. <laughs> <laughs> Bummer. <laughs> but anyway, we were, we were handed out uh, patterns with instructions to use bright colored fabrics and to put our name in the little center square, which had to be white. Now, and this is a great partnership between the museum and the West Michigan Quilters Guild, isn't it? It sure is. And we've had a long-term uh, liaison with the um, museum. And do you actually get a chance to work with the, the quilts that are in the collection? We have. Uh, we've worked with documenting the quilts. And I think Andrea will tell you a little bit more about the results of that and how those quilts are available online for search. And lately, we've been helping her with rolling the quilts. Previously, they were put in boxes, but now they found out that it's easier to have them be rolled so they don't get the crease marks. And so we've been helping her do that. That's great. And I know that um, members of the West Michigan Quilters Guild still participate with the museum regularly, uh, again, to preserve the heritage of quilting, don't they? That's correct. And not only do we come here physically to help, but financially also. Well, and I know that the quilt was made nine years ago, so we're coming up on our 40th anniversary, aren't we? We sure are. <laughs> Do you think we should make another quilt? Um, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, great. Uh, the guild is, uh, had been in existence, I think, for almost 40 years. And it is one of the largest guilds in the country, isn't it? It is. We have close to 500 members. And nationally known quilt speakers. I, yeah. I've heard some amazing mm -hmm. speakers at the guild. Yeah, yeah we have. Great. Well, if you're interested in quilt history, your local museum is a wonderful place to start. Chances are they're going to have some exhibits or be able to tell you where you can go to learn more. So enjoy looking at the history of a quilt that perhaps you own or the one that you might find next. Andrea Melvin and Andrea is the curator collection curator at the museum yes yeah so Andrea how long have you been involved with this uh, exhibit well yeah I've been here at the museum for about six years and um, this is a wonderful changing exhibit we have here at the museum it's one of our permanent exhibitions we change out a quilt um, periodically to showcase the variety that we have here in the collection it's quite a huge collection we have here at our museum almost 200 quilts Oh my, and what is the oldest quilt you have? Oh goodness, the oldest quilt I think is probably around the 1820s. Okay, and so over the years as you've been involved, I'm sure you've learned more about the different styles and the history of quilts, but is there a tool for the average person to go research their own quilts? There is lots of ways you can explore the museum's quilt collection. First off, you can come visit the museum. We've got a great interactive quilt uh, program here that's set up in our Cues for Quilts exhibit. Um, you can explore all the different types of quilts, all the different styles and uh, time periods and history behind those quilts. Um, also, you can, uh, on our website is a great tool. Um, it's our online database, and that can be something that you can um, explore the collections using. So if somebody had an old quilt, would they be able to go say, and look for pictures of quilts that are similar? Is that might a way they would start to research? That's, that would be a great way to do it. Most of them have been digitized as well, so you can see a, an electronic picture uh, of the quilt and some of its details. It's a great way to sort of compare what you have at home. Um, you can also read a lot more about the history behind those individual quilts and, and learn maybe more about your own through that tool. That's amazing. So people are always finding quilts either that they have in their own attic or maybe that they found at garage sales and the value of them can be quite something. So if you do have an older quilt, uh, do some research, read a book, visit some websites, but make sure that if you have an old quilt that you learn a little bit about it to find out if you have something valuable. On 
today's tour, I learned a lot about quilt history, the people involved, and how a partnership between a quilt guild and a public museum can be so beneficial to both parties. So I hope you've enjoyed this On Point tour, part of On Point Tutorials, Tips, and Tours. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching our video. If you liked that one, be sure you subscribe to our channel. We wouldn't want you to miss a single video. And leave a comment. We would really like to hear from you.